Thank you. Thank you. Henry, what are we even talking about on this show? Man, I have no idea. We're just going to make it up as we go along. Just another day at PB. Hello, YouTube. So, we've thrown our clothes into some bin bags. Miraculously, didn't get lost at some airports. And we have arrived in California for the Sea Otter Classic. It's my first one, Kaz. This is what, your 200th Sea Otter? I think it's my 10th. 10th. Oh, that's some good going, though. Yeah. And Dario, for you? I think this is my fifth Sea Otter. Nice. I went to college near here, so I would just come and get free stickers. Oh, college degree, la di da. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we even get into the, um, the festival itself, there's been a lot of, annoyingly enough, big bike releases come out today that we've got to try and catch up on. So, as we film it, the Epic World Cup got released this morning, which is, I mean, it's a, it's, it would be different if, if it wasn't for the Trek, but it is, is in some ways a different bike. It looks pretty cool. I think it's one of those bikes that Specialized and made it look good, but I think if a lot of brands had made it, it would have kind of looked a bit fugly. Um, 75 mil travel, 110 mil stroke, and you know the way that World Cups are going, Kaz. Did this did this surprise? Yeah, sorry, 110 mil fork. Did this surprise you a bit? Because the Epic World Cup, but a lot of World Cups are now being won on 110 mil travel bikes. Yeah, I don't think it's that surprising. I kind of the way you alluded to in the first look article, it's almost like a hardtail with suspension rather than being a short travel full suspension bike. So those courses that somebody might normally want to be on a hardtail and they don't want to go full suspension, it's that kind of middle ground. I mean, it's a very specialized, specialized bike. Like, yes. you know, it is just for this little niche that exists and they're a big enough company they can kind of fulfill that need. Obviously we talked about Trek. Trek already had a bike that kind of sits in that zone too but uh i think there's a demand for it from some racers out there i don't think the new specialized is the kind of bike you're going to see on like a lot of trails like casual riders buying necessarily but like for racing maybe in europe people will be buying it yeah it makes sense for certain applications i know it's funny because just as we thought cross country got really cool and rad with the epic evo and the top fuel it's kind of going back to its roots a little bit. But like you said, I genuinely, I don't really, I don't think even Specialized consider this a true full suspension bike because the way they've still got the Epic Hardtail as the entry level. And, you know, if, if, you, if you buy the most expensive Epic Hardtail, it just so happens to have 75 mil of travel. Right. Um, in terms of its design, it is a bit different compared to that Trek though. Instead of having a sliding structural member, it's now kind of got, got a pivot, etc. But Kaz, this bike isn't particularly cheap it's not for necessarily as dario alluded to for a lot of different people do you think this is do you think they do, are they going to break even on this bike <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know it's plus we didn't I mean, really mention it's a proprietary shock yes. too so that's another thing specialized has obviously done proprietary shocks in the past with how they've, they've always gone well hey <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Well. people mean, love the brain yeah, yeah. The brain i mean to be fair, the brain has worked better than other... I mean, remember their dual crown Enduro Fork? It did not work. That was ahead of its time. Heavy bikes, baby. Yeah, well, it was actually a light bike with a dual light. crown fork, <laughs> and they might have gone too low. I don't know. But, yes, yeah, so they've done proprietary stuff in the past with mixed results tending to not be the best results. But in this case, I think they wanted something that didn't exist. There was no off-the-shelf solution. So we'll see how it goes. But, again, it's such a small niche i don't know yeah. like i think it'll be cool to see how it does in the world cup if there are courses where this is the one that that does well that'll yeah. obviously help them but i kind of see it in the same light as like racing downhill bikes anymore like most consumers aren't buying like the top of the line downhill bike that's getting raced at world cups and this is kind of the cross-country equivalent i mean that's been the case with a lot of cross-country bikes but this is like to the nth degree it's like very much for racing very much for professionals who want like the sharpest feeling race bike like it's probably not going to be and well that kind of leads us on to the next point talking of bikes that aren't necessarily a sharp feeling race bike but the new yeti sb135 which has unthinkably well it's given the internet what they want we saw pivot do i think with the shadow cat 27.5 wheel trail bike dario you've had this bike you swung a leg over it do you want to talk us through it i like it <laughs> i'm willing to admit that you like it's it a great. lot or you like it i like it a lot i've been riding like i've been on the road for like 10 days but prior to like traveling a lot i was pretty much only riding that like despite having other bikes that i could hop on i was like really keen to ride the 135 okay so we've gone from because i think sometimes the the how to put it the shortcoming so when you go to bigger bikes they always feel more stable when you go to shorter bikes sometimes they feel twitchy and it's not always fair that the comparison bleeds one way more than the other sure H how do we how do you feel we've gone to 29 
We then gone to mullets. How do you feel about 27.5 bikes in 2023? I mean, it's a novelty to a degree. Like I hadn't ridden a full 27.5 bike long term since like 2020. So it's been a few years since I've like spent a lot of time on a fully small wheeled bike. But beyond the novelty, like it does some things really well. Like it turns really nicely. We have a lot of like funky little tight trails in Bellingham and it like makes those feel really fast. Uh, the sensation of like pumping the backside of stuff is better on the little bike than it is on like, for instance, like I have the SB160 as well. So like same brand, same suspension platform, just different wheel size, different travel. They're distinctly different, both really good, but fun in different circumstances like i wouldn't take the 135 on like super gnarly trails because like you do notice that the smaller front wheel like holds up in certain stuff and it's slower on choppy terrain but it's really fun i like it and it works well like i don't think it's like only a bike for like super super chill trails but like for the majority of people riding like but yeah do you think it's the bike that a lot of people should or the style of bike because we all and myself yeah. included we want the gnarliest bike to do the gnarliest things most of the time i like to go to the woods and ride relatively smooth medium pace turns on a medium gradient and have a nice time yeah i do think that like the current crop of like 27.5 or mullet medium travel bikes are like really good for a lot of people uh, speaking of mullet though do you think this would be better if it was a mullet i know out there there's a contingent of hardcore 27.5 fans that are gonna get mad but do you think that you know your average rider if he had a little bit better rollover on the front wheel still had the back wheel like do we'll you think see that I, i'm i'm saving so I haven't done that testing yet, but I'm saving that for the long term. Um, I talked to Yeti. They kind of alluded that they've done that testing themselves and that like some people liked it, but they wanted to keep this like firmly a 27.5 bike. They recommended like a 150 fork with a 29er, which is longer than I would have expected, but like pretty cool. So it'll be like 135 rear, 150 front, 29 wheel. I will try that and see what it's like. Yeah, I, I think it will be faster in rough terrain. I think it'll be less like zippy poppy fun time, but maybe that's a good trade off. So Kaz, looking into your crystal ball slash knowing what's coming because of embargoes, will the summer hold more flat 27s for the mountain bike industry, do you think? I don't think so. Not that many, at least not what my crystal ball says. I think that the mullet is a good compromise. I mean, even compromises too isn't the right word exactly, but like with a mullet, at least you get the same front wheel. Companies can spec the same fork across their whole line. It makes things easier from the company level, which that's not, you know, we're talking about consumers here. So the consumers want the best product. Maybe mullet's not always the case, but from what I've experienced, I'm a fan of mullet just because it does kind of have that. I'm not even going to say the best of both worlds because it's not that. That word <laughs> it's not the right term, but I think you do get kind of the benefits of both um yeah. so it's just kind of surprising that they introduced this but it's cool and i think another aspect of it is sizing like yeah even just a 29 inch wheel can sometimes be too big for some riders um shorter riders so this comes in an extra small and a small and they are properly extra small and small so yeah. i think that's the thing you know kids even i mean a very very lucky kid that has deep right. pocket yeah. parents but you know well i'm i'm six foot on the nose 183 centimeters and a 29 inch rear will often <clears throat> get my somewhat low hanging fruit if you know what i mean it's uh, it's a difficult place to be especially a long travel 29er i find i don't understand how people you see everyone ride them on world cups and i, I just don't understand speaking of uh, you know other things that are coming out which are pretty cool a couple of weeks ago we saw ks reveal that upside down fork in uh in in taipei here dario what what, what do we have for us well to not one to one up KS, but maybe they did. Push Industries from Colorado released uh, an inverted fork. Uh, we don't really have much information on it, but I got to check one out today. There's photos on the website. Speculate wildly at your leisure. It looks really cool. I didn't even get to squish it, which was upsetting was and that, difficult. Did they, say, did they say no? They said no squishing. Oh, no squishing. Not because it can't <laughs> squish, but because I'm not what allowed to. So I like was holding it by the handlebars, wheeling it to the spot where I was going to take pictures, and I wasn't able to squish it. Uh, we'll see uh, if we can do if we can squish it in the next few days. We'll, yeah, we we're gonna we're gonna butter them up them. Yeah. and squish that for <laughs> and squish it. Yeah, which I was like, yeah. Anyway, whatever. I'm not so upset about let's, that. Let's start speculating though. All right, so speculation number one. Go it's on. going to be expensive because it's made by push in Colorado speculation. Number two, it's going to be super high quality because it looks and feels that way. It's like immaculate. It looks sick. 
based on the quality of their shocks, I think it will be let, super duper nice. Let's, let's talk about push though. They have form with coil shocks and air ramp up chambers or air ramp up technologies maybe a bit better putting it do you think what are those top caps looking like could you glean any information from there i would assume they'll use the same technology they've been using in the shock because like they've kind of like made that their bread and butter thing they're very firm about coil being the best thing for suspension and so it seems like it follows that this would be a coil fork but do you think though that you know i mean we talk about what the people perhaps feeling like they want a 27.5 fork a lot of people feel they might want a upside down fork to go on their full 27 bike. Do you think that it, it does actually, this is going to serve a niche or do you think it's going to actually serve the interests of the many? I mean, the, the words that Darren, the owner and founder of Push kept repeating to me was, this is going to change your life. <laughs> and so I think he's, he's making like strong claims, but they genuinely believe that this is like far and away the best thing on the market. Obviously, we haven't tried it yet, but I'm keen to. Like, not, not to throw push under the bus or make any insinuations whatsoever at all, but Matt Beer had a bike that nearly changed his life in Whistler over the summer when the head tube said goodbye. So, good and bad. That's a good, good point. Good and bad. I think they've had a better tra uh, track record than, than weird home brew frames. But, yeah. Um, I don't think we're going to be seeing this on a ton of, like, you know, from manufacturer spec bikes, but it'll be on a lot of boutique bikes out there it certainly will. And that, in due time. That's, that's the style of brand they are. Now, that, that's the news. This week, we're going to put go back to the courtroom. We're going to put something in the stand. And Kaz, it's something that, as, as your, tenth, your, your tenth event, you're something of authority, as we put in the Sea Otter Mountain Bike Festival in the stand. Cue meme. So, Sea Otter is, is viewed in one of two ways. Either a great festival where you're going to have lots of fun, or people just tell you how bad the racing is. Does it matter that the racing isn't very good? Well, it depends what you're here for. I mean, like, like if you're going to come and be a racer, it's not, you know, I don't know. The racing is bad in general, overall. What just, makes it bad? Just the, if, the courses are, like, the downhill course is not very downhilly. Um, people do like the slalom, but it's more if you're racing the slalom. If you're not racing the slalom, it's exciting for, like, four runs, and then it's boring because it's just slalom. Um, so, like, I... I like the aspects of it. I don't think they can get or get rid of the racing events. They need to have them. And that's a cool thing about Sea Otter. It's a consumer facing event. So that means that the general public can come here, talk to all the people in the booths. They can watch some racing. Like it's just all about bikes and that's great. So I don't think there's much they could do with the racing besides move the whole event to a different location. And that's not going to happen. So they make the most of the terrain they have. Like, you know, the racing is not anything to really get excited about as a spectator from far away. Like if you're at home, you don't need to stay up late and watch the live feed of the, you know, of any of the events. But if you're here in the area talking to people and then you want to go do a race, I think that's cool. Nice. And you, you're something of a fan of the festival. Hey, you love it here. I love Sea Otter. I think it's a great time. What, what's, what's one of your favorite Sea Otters? Like which, which was the year that you thought that was, Ooh, that was the well. year? I don't. I have like year? a like a personal secret revolving around <laughs> Sea Otter that I'm not going to divulge on this on this show. Oh, but uh, one, it's like an Easter egg for like longtime pink bike watchers. <laughs> but uh, oh no, I know oh, this. Yeah, that's a good I secret. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we'll talk, keep it an Easter egg. Yeah, it's an Easter egg. Well, no, no, it's a secret. We can let them know if they do some searching, they could probably find where Dario. Like really, why I had a really really good year. Yeah, in sea you Otter can find Dario's good Sea <laughs> Otter. He had a great Sea Otter. I had a really good Sea Otter one year. I've had every year has been great yeah. but one was in like particularly good and it's documented yeah. um but <laughs> i i to be clear I, the reason i don't i the reason i love sea otter isn't because of the racing like I, I never come here to race i do like watching the dual slalom i think it's pretty cool um i when i was leaving yesterday i realized the coolest race they're not doing here that they should be doing is a hill sprint climb of the like super steep paved road that leads into Laguna Seca. It's like a thousand feet in a mile. <laughs> they have e-bike racing. They do have no. e-bike racing, but no, I want, I want that to be like oh, to meat powered, oh, yeah. like sprint up the hill. Everyone at the festival on the side <laughs> cheering, <laughs> jeering on as people are like turning themselves inside out up the climb. That would be entertaining. And it's like a one and done. Yeah. It takes you two minutes to do a thing. 
I've got other ideas for Seattle though too. See, I think because we said it's a consumer show in, in large part, they should embrace that aspect and make it a full on carnival. Like I want, I want like a fair. I want carnies to come here and set up really sketchy rides. I want Ferris wheels. I want a demolition derby. Yeah. I want cotton candy. I want fried dough. I want it just to be a full spectacle instead of this weird like. It's more like this halfway is the most there. American I've ever seen. That's because they need to embrace it. Because otherwise, it's just kind of like no, it's bike dorks, right? You're quite like. Wow, you know, just quite gently. Now you're just like, cotton candy, motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> I do like cotton candy. Fried dough is better than cotton candy. Just like, frying everything. Yeah, batter, just go batter, for it. Because they have like the food trucks that kind of gives it that carnival atmosphere, mm. but it's like, it's like a carnival for dorks, but I want it to be more carnival. But we are dorks. We I can't know, get away from it. We can have more carnival. No, I, yeah. I, think, I think the problem, the bicycle industry is all of the kids that didn't really make friends at school and now made friends with each other. I had plenty of friends <laughs> in school. Thank you very much. I had sure. two. They were also <laughs> dorks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I think you can embrace it. Because like, if, especially if after hours, you know, this show stops at five o'clock and we all go back in hotel rooms and just like write Tari words in the dark. But Dario, you said that with the confidence of a kid who didn't have any friends at school, but his mom said he should. <laughs> <laughs> so what if all my friends just happen to be my parents' friends? <laughs> but you know, yeah, you're right. Maybe it could be another element. But I'm kind of surprised. I mean, fair play to the organizers to keep this going through COVID. I thought yeah. it was maybe yeah, going to go. Close to, I mean, they didn't have it at one point. But then last year, I think I went twice because there's two sea otters yeah. in 12 months period. But I mean, this year, I think they sold out all their booths and it seems it's, it's only Thursday. Cool. It's pretty busy. Holy so, gosh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's the weather's great too. So, I mean, it's a cool way to get excited about the bike season. And I think that, you know, whether or not you like to go by model years and all that, springtime in North America, people are starting to get their bikes out of storage if they have winter time where they live. And this is a good way to kick it off for a lot of people. All right. Sorry, go on. All right. The one, the thing I maybe love most about Sea Otter, aside from free stickers, is like seeing in person all these like super tiny brands that you've like maybe caught a glimpse of online, maybe you've heard about, and like they're here explaining their stuff like showing you what they've been working on it's like it's cool to see people's passion like incarnate it's funny i think that maybe i don't know i'm, I'm someone that's quite and maybe maybe it's a, a work from home thing i don't know maybe it's just working maybe it's just my it's probably my personality actually i'm somewhat of a cynical person but it is actually pretty cool you go to world cups or you go to events like this and you actually see people, how much people love bikes how much it means to them you're actually like okay that's actually yeah. That's pretty cool. It's pretty good. And all of us do genuinely love bikes, whether or not. I mean, I'm an introvert, so shows like this tend to be a little bit much. Like, I have to kind of force myself to talk to people and be like, just come across as more excited and upbeat than I appear usually. But like, getting cotton candy, getting a sugar. Yeah. Cotton candy is going to help me a lot. Like, if I just get in that cotton candy, I'll be like Mister Extrovert for sure. But yeah, it is cool to be able to like interact with these people that you usually just email back and forth with and see them, and you know, gives us a chance to kind of preview what's coming for the year too. So it's useful for yeah everybody. Like journalists and regular riders do and what is there anything that you've heard about here that you're super excited to see maybe you can talk about it maybe you can't is there anything that you know i mean because i think Matt, the internet's changed a lot right there used to be all the launches would be sort of at these media events where now it's maybe a bit softer and you're seeing actually brands launch bikes at different parts of the world on the day that sea otter starts which is probably very different but um no i think i think there's some cool stuff do you know what i was pretty cool thought was pretty cool um, that classified system being integrated to the hunt. Yeah. Hunt. I thought actually that was pretty sweet. You know, we've seen some bits and pieces, you know, and, and they kind of, I don't know, just seeing like these long form plans that people lay out sort of come into fruition. You hear things like, oh, they're going to link up with this or yeah. this, that, and the other. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I've definitely seen some stuff that is exciting and like can't wait to experience it in the next couple months yeah i think eurobike this year is going to see a lot of big releases yeah. from taipei like everyone was like yeah come back and come to germany and you'll see it yeah, yeah. um so we are going to do a couple of our normal coverage from the event some tech videos we're going to do a sort of roundup podcast as well as a video which will come out when we can when we can be bothered when we can when these editors will finally stop at refusing to work 18 hours a day and make us our videos typical <laughs> i will say a, a sea otter memory there was one year where the editors were working at night in this place we were staying we all used to stay in one one house and i went downstairs and all the editors had fallen asleep at their computers they were just like this and then they wake up and then just like click some buttons I, and then they would like i actually did fall that back last asleep. night i yeah, fell asleep yeah. with my laptop in my lap <laughs> yeah. man well yeah that's not that's not gonna be me lads anyway thank you very much for watching and we will see you when we when the editors get their acts into gear and they start making these videos. <laughs>